at um, the next web 2010 and I'm standing here with the hostess Hermani her her many way her my on me her mind on me from of course we all know the uh, techfluff.tv money you've uh, been out here for two days you've uh, hosted the whole thing is there any things you've seen that is you go like wow this is interesting this is new no it's all been terrible worst conference of my life <laughs> okay this is online this is live <laughs> Okay. I'm joking. I'm, I'm hosting the conference, <laughs> yeah. and it's the. I think it's Europe's best tech. I know it is the best, and it's the most wonderful I things in sliced bread. But now, give me some specifics of which really triggered you. Um, okay. Well, Tim Ferriss, obviously, four-hour work week, right? Um, he he talks about haters. Now it's very interesting because a lot of lots of people at the moment are becoming their own brands. They're doing like self promo promotion yeah. they're getting more Twitter followers than traditional media outlets so for example Robert Scoble has more Twitter followers than the BBC Pete Cashmore has over a million of followers on Twitter um, Michael Arrington so people are really promoting their own brand their own name as a brand yeah. and uh, Tim Ferriss has done as well but with that and with the publicity you also get a backlash of haters People that write nasty, horrible... Anything to get a little bit of attention is yeah. basically done. Yeah. But what they do, and this is, this is the thing, what they do is they don't write it under their own name. They, don't ha they, ha they write it under a fake name or an avatar. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think um, Tim Timothy Ferris was speaking about how to deal with haters and how you shouldn't respond or link to it because then it goes up in the Google rankings. And uh, it was a really interesting speech because obviously, you know, what I do is um, partly I have to sort of promote what I'm doing and I promote my name and my brand. And of course, I had to deal with haters as well. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, I'm not adverse to criticism. I don't actually mind it. I think the only way we can improve no, is... But you hate stupid haters who just scream at you and every time you try to reason with them, they just start becoming more nastier. It's not even that. I don't mind if they scream at me and tell me some criticism, but they must do it under their real name. If you have something to say to me, say it to me yeah. under your real name. Have the balls to, to use your real name. Don't hide behind a fake avatar or, you know, don't don't be a troll. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think if you're going to criticize someone, do, do it under your real yeah. name. Yeah, and uh, brands, I mean, this is interesting because you experience it now too. This is what the brands are really afraid of, you know, the discussions which are going on everywhere where brands are being harassed and being uh, frightened and, and they are, that's, they, they, it basically stifles them from experimenting. So it's interesting that people like you, who are their own brand, are now also experiencing what the big brands are afraid of. So that is a nice uh, connection. Did he also come up with some things to do against it? Um, Except from saying morally, I think you shouldn't do that. But apart from that. Um, he had this like chart that the Royal Navy used to deal with, uh, I think it was the Royal Navy or the, or the Army or something, to deal with um, Royal Air Force, I don't know, something. The, the way they deal with haters and there's actually like a flow chart yeah. of what the steps you should take. Um, so I guess that could be useful. Um, but I just I just guess if you if you put your name out there and you are a self promoter you have to expect the bad with the good. Mm -hmm. To be honest, if you've got a hater, then it's almost like having a fan, you know? I know, I mean, haters are just people who really spend time with you exactly. you know they are they are they are exactly. yes. they're yes. people that have taken the time to yeah. write if you are not being hated you don't we don't take you seriously there you go okay, good you so go. we take you very yeah. seriously we because you have some serious them. haters yeah oh, so that was one thing you know about being your own brand how to uh, manage that how to manage the haters um, what about mobile is there anything uh, in mobile because mobile is going to take over as the biggest uh, as the biggest web uh, platform uh, was there attention for that too um, yes mm. We had the uh, talk from Florie Britzel yesterday and she was talking on a new field, well, something that she wants to get recognized as a bona fide area of study, mobileology, mm. which is the study of the, uh, of the effect that mobile phones are having on human beings. Now, this isn't my mobile, let's pretend it is, mm. but I literally walk around with my mobile strapped to my hand. Yep. You know, I think in the future it won't even be a phone, it'll just be on our hands. I mean, I know I saw a TED talk the other day and um, they were just having like the, you be able to access your data with, from your hand. Well, do you know that Facebook, um, 
30% of the, of, the, of the hundreds of millions of Americans check their Facebook status at night a couple yeah. of times. Every time that they go to the loo, they basically yeah. check their status. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think um, Mark Zuckerberg just launched this social graph and he's saying the default of the web is social. Um, personally, I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, I, uh, I use it to my advantage and I promote what I'm doing and I actually see the direct benefits of people asking me for quotes through Facebook, mm -hmm. my business. Yeah. You know, they see a video that my company has made and they go, oh my god, you know, we're having an event, can you make that for us? What kind of tools are you using yourself to integrate your presence on Facebook, your presence on LinkedIn, your presence on Twitter, your presence everywhere? How do you, what do you do yourself? Well, people ask me this, it's like, how do you manage all of those social networks? The answer is that I don't. I manage one, which is Twitter, and then I have it linked into my yeah, yeah. Facebook and LinkedIn. So Same as I. Twitter is the, the primary place to be. Yeah. So, you know, what you're putting out there goes the same across all of your social networks. Yeah. Now, as some people do different things for Twitter and different things to Facebook because they say it's a different audience, and it, and it is. People on Facebook don't really care about location yet, whereas on, people on Twitter have a little jizz in their pants about it. They get really excited about it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I, I think for me, I just don't have the time to manage all of those different... No. You do it straight on. And yeah. private life and uh, business life, just combined? Yeah, I mean I don't have any privacy controls set on Facebook but I am aware of what I'm uploading, if that makes sense. Of course, so but I mean it's not like, I mean a friend of mine, um, Martin, he has uh, 75,000 followers or 120,000 followers, uh, he's a Dutch guy, works at Disney and he just misses the intimacy to basically discuss with your real friends. So he has a second account where he basically just only invites his friends and he basically has a different kind of conversation. I mean, I have three best friends and if I want to speak to them, I'll pick up the phone and ring them or go around to their house, you know? The rest are people that I meet like you at a conference. I think what you're doing is cool, what I'm doing is cool. Maybe there's some work for some synergy and, um, you know, we'll stay in contact via Facebook. Yeah. And maybe if I'm in Amsterdam next time, I'll tweet, uh, write a comment on your wall for yeah, a beer. Or you say, uh, to all my friends in Amsterdam, I'm coming, who wants to join? Yeah. So it's a really cool way. And then we have a tweet up with uh, yeah. all your 500 fans here in the Netherlands. Okay. Exactly. What is, um, what's your business model nowadays? Where, where, what's, what's the primary thing you do, but how do you make your money? So my main company is called newspepper.com mm -hmm. and we're a media company. Essentially, the main thing we do is video for the internet. We're a B2B, a video production company. Um, but we have a slightly different business model in the fact that we employ students and graduates in media so that enables them to get paid on the job training and our clients to get cheaper media. Yep. We do all services from live streaming, promotional videos, um, we do photography, any sort of media service. So, you know, we're really helping. So that's the hardcore service money. Yeah, that's where, I mean, you've got to generate cash right now. It's, yeah. you know, it's hard to do a B2C. A lot of my friends who are entrepreneurs in London have had to... Um, gone from uh, B to C to B to B just to make cash in the current economic climate. Yep. So, I mean, TechPluff TV is almost like a vehicle. It gets me in front of people. I can interview anyone I want, go to any event I want. And that actually brings in business for Newspepper. Yep. Does that make sure. sense? Oh, it makes, it's the default business model. <laughs> it's the default business model. It's the most fantastic lead generator uh, there is. And you have a lot of fun uh, with that. I love what I do. Yeah, I, w I can't imagine myself doing anything else. I'm very disobedient and very unemployable. So I'm going to always be an entrepreneur. Isn't it wonderful that the web basically gave you a platform so that you can be yourself and still enjoy uh, and still have a comfortable life and be uh, and be inspired? It is amazing. Like as long as I've got people on the ground in London with newspaper, I could probably pretty much be anywhere in the world that I want to be. So I'm moving to San Francisco in um, in July, June and July. It's like a for a tech person in tech, it's like being a Muslim and visiting Mecca. You know, if you're, if you're a geek, you have to go to Silicon Valley. And there's a bunch of them here, so um, you basically can figure out, you can get the whole committee ready to go. Hey, thanks very much, doing a great job in, uh, in getting our conference uh, up and running. Appreciate it. Thank you very it. much, thank you.